folks, and welcome back to twitch.tv slash games with Nick. We are continuing our playthrough of Virtuous Us Reward. Um, last time, we went through the uh, treatment center and actually reached the first true ending, uh, the Temioji ending, where Temioji, Quark, and Clover escaped after betraying us one last time. And we also recovered the first bomb disarming code, so making some progress. Um, after we finished, we got the ending, we went back, we traded Tenmyoji in the first round, and went through the treatment center because of it. And that's where we're picking it up. With Dio having, as usual, opened one of the Amidex gates. 45. What the hell? Somebody else must have opened one of the AB rooms. Why would they do that? Jerks. Whatever, we should be heading back anyway. I headed for the door. Wait! Lover's voice stopped me. What is it? I turned to see her pointing toward the wall with the treatment pots. The screen. It changed. What? The screen on the pods monitor thingy. Oh yeah, it says recent operational records. I stepped closer and began to read. What it said was... Interesting. Currently treating one subject. That one subject had to mean Quark. This was the pod we put him into, after all. Right on. 748, one subject released. 806, one subject successfully restored. 816, cold sleep mode disengaged. Beginning restoration of one subject. All prior records have been erased. Authorization admin. I checked the other pods. They were all the same. This is actually not 748. It's 748 hours ago. 7 hours and 48 minutes ago. One subject released. One subject restored. Felt sleep mode disengaged. Beginning restoration. Blah, blah, blah. Whoa. What is all this? I think it's saying that about 8 hours ago, somebody in this pod woke up from cold sleep. Well, three people, actually. One for each pod. They all say the same thing, see? That's before we all woke up, huh? I mean, it hasn't been eight hours yet. Yeah. So the three pod people could be three of us. They could have been captured earlier, don't know how much earlier. And were thought out eight hours ago and carried into the AB rooms. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I really don't think there'd be anyone else in here besides the nine of us. Well... I guess it's actually the ten of us, huh? Yeah, if you got the old woman we found, it would be ten, wouldn't it? So who are the three pot people? Don't ask me! How am I supposed to know that? All it says is subject. A, that's creepy. B, it doesn't tell us anything about who they might have been. It doesn't say when they were put into cold sleep either. And this bit, where it says, all prior records have been erased. Authorization admin. I wonder why they wouldn't just read the time, though. What? Well, you said yourself, the lock said 8 hours ago, not like 9.15 a.m. This minus signs if to mean this far in the past. Who would ever write time like that? Yeah, that is weird. Maybe your senior doesn't want us to know what the actual time is. Why not? Hell if I know. Hmm. Speaking of things I don't know, why did this stuff suddenly show up? Seems like whatever it was that triggered this activated as soon as we opened the door to leave. Wouldn't that mean Zero Senior set it up to work that way? Yeah, but why? That's what I'm asking. What reason would he have to do that? Maybe he wanted us to see the records. Perhaps, but he deleted a bunch of the data. Why? Could it all be a trick? A trick? All of these records are fake. Zero Senior just set it up to mess with us. So you're saying this was just a joke? Well, I can't say for sure, but it seems possible, right? Hmm. No, it doesn't make sense. Well, let's ask somebody else. Maybe they can think of something. Yeah, you're right. The AB gates have opened, we need to be heading back to the warehouse anyway. Yeah, and we need to tell everyone what happened with Quark. 
He double-checked that Quark was alright in his pod, then hurried out of the treatment center. Can I skip? Nope. It looks just like the other one. Hey, could you show me that map? Yeah, I thought so. This one is right under the floor A warehouse. Huh, so it is. Oh, are those? Those doors are white. And there are three of them. Okay, let's go take some closer look. I knew it. These are chromatic doors. See? They've got a little box right next to them, just like the others. These are the third round chromatic doors, huh? I guess we'll be coming back here pretty soon. Yeah. Well, we might not have to. What do you mean? We both have 6 BP right now. Oh, both of us are a pair too. Yeah, that's true. We're a pair, oh. right? Yeah. And who's our opponent? Quark. Exactly. But he's in the pod right now, so... If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. You're not saying we should think betray, are you? Weren't you planning to? I thought that was why you were okay with option C when we were making the groups. Uh, no, no, that's not... I just, I thought that with Quark's condition, I'd be able to choose ally and not worry about getting oh, betrayed. come on. You don't need to lie to me. We're partners. That means we share the same destiny. So let's not hide anything from each other. Yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're not, I'm not hiding anything. We're gonna lie. Wait, you're serious? Yeah, I am. You were really going to pick ally? Whoa, hold on a second there. We might not get another chance like this. Let's say we ally and get up to eight points. We don't know if we'll be able to get any points next round. For all we know, there might not even be a next round. There are three other people with six BP, right? Dio, K, and Phi. What do you think is going to happen if one of them gets nine points this round? That's not going to happen. Why not? Finally, I'm playing against the Nyoji. He's only got one VP left, though, so I don't really think to take Betray. Then you picked Ally to kill him. Same goes for Dio. He's playing against Alice and K and Alice is VP. No! Don't even think about that! Oh, Dio is so gonna betray K and Alice. But it repeats him and Tenyoji, so unless Dio's wanting to kill someone, he won't be able to get his VP to 9. Then Alice has to vote Betray. Yeah, that's generally the best defensive choice. But if Dio chooses ally, then K would have. Jeez. Well, it's just like I said. Then, if K gets nine BP, then there won't be a third AB game. Well, that's not necessarily the case. So it's over when someone gets nine BP. No, as long as that person doesn't open the number nine door, the game goes on. So you think that K will stay here, even if he gets enough points to leave? I don't know, but it's no, possible. It's not. Well, we can think about how we're gonna vote later. For now, we need to get back to the others. There's a couple things I gotta do when we get back. Fine. Okay, back to floor A then. Let's move. Turn and head for the exit. After a few moments, I heard Clover's footsteps falling behind me.
I've said this before, but the fact that they force us to see the path through is so annoying. I wish when nothing is happening and it's not plot relevant, they really should just teleport us to the warehouse and call it. Okay. Have you seen this already? Oh, thank goodness you're back. Yep. Are we the last ones? Yes. Hey, where's Tanya's expression was furious, and from the way he was thumbing toward me, I felt like I only had a few seconds before I was on the ground with his hands around my neck. I explained what had happened to Quark and paused as quickly as I could. So are these pod things really safe? Probably. Probably? No, they're definitely safe. He's fine. Well, are they safe or aren't they? Look, I'm just worried about him, all right? Can you take me to this treatment center, Clover? Uh... Don't worry. We've still got 20 minutes left. Plenty of time to go have a look and come back. Okay. Come on, then. As soon as she finished, she was off. Then you just followed at her heels, and in the blink of an eye, they were gone out of the magic the door. Alright, you guys got some explaining to do. I beg your pardon? You opened the AV gates before Claire and I got back, didn't you? I want to know where the hell you'd go and do something like that. Sigma, take a look. As she spoke, I gestured toward the line of AV rooms. Only one was open. It's not like we opened them all up. So you're saying only one person or one pair jumped it down here? Yes. Well, then who was it? I opened it. So it was you? As much. It's not really a big deal, okay? I mean, you came right back. Yes, deal. Yes, it is a big deal. Why? If you hadn't made it back by the deadline, you'd have just defaulted to Ally. No, not just. Are you telling me you didn't know? Didn't you find one of these notes? What? You found this in the treatment center. There was no such thing in the pressure exchange chamber. I didn't see one in the pantry either. Oh, huh. well, whatever. You should really probably read it though. Here are some more A B game rules for you. Not the Yeah, we can everybody gets penalized. You get it now? If we hadn't gone back in time, Cloverfork and I could have died. And you just all right, all right, I get it. Sorry. Cut me some slack though, man. I didn't know. So you wouldn't have opened the gate if you did? Of course I wouldn't have. Yeah, sure. What the hell, bro. He is such a piece of garbage. You said the room you went into was a treatment center, right? Yeah. If they treat people there, I think they'd have shelves of medicine and stuff. Did you find any Excelivir? No. It's not really that kind of place. It just had the spots and that was it. Besides, if we'd find anything to cure Radical 6, it would have put Quark in the pod. I see. Can the pod cure Radical 6? No, unfortunately. How do you know that? Oh, well, it sits on the screen next to the pods. Something about how it can provide relief from symptoms, but it can't actually cure the disease. That's better than nothing, though. Hmm. All right, there's one more thing about the pods I should tell you. As quick as I could, I explained what the records had said about the pods' occupants in their cold sleep. Cold sleep? Are you suggesting that three of us were, until recently, cryogenically frozen? Sure seems like it. If you can trust what we read, yeah. Which of us are the pod people, then? I don't know, that's what I'm saying. Didn't say who they were, or even when they were frozen. So this cold sleep, that means they basically froze the body solid, right? Not like how a bear or something hibernates, where it just slows way down. Yeah, I think so. So, what would happen to the heart? Uh, what? Wouldn't it stop when you were put into a cold sleep? <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Your comes off. Oh, so if we go into cold sleep, our bracelets would come off. And then we can just defrost ourselves right away. You said there were three pods, right? We'd only need to do it three times for the nine of us. Uh-huh. I imagine that will work for you, but perhaps not so much for me. The armor. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll figure something out. We should go have a look at any rate. We'll be able to come up with a plan once we know more. Of course. Oh, we're going right now?
That line would give you room, Snow. Okay. What? What do you mean the cold sleep function doesn't work? I'm sorry. You don't have anything to apologize for, Luna. Zero Senior must have just locked it down. When Clara and I were here, it worked. Yeah, I remember checking it. Then that bastard set this up. Oh, that's low. It is not pleasant, but consider this. We have seen how thorough Zero is. Would he really have left such an obvious loophole? Yeah, probably not, but... Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. If Zero Jr. heard me, he could have shut it off. Whatever the case, it is an unfortunate outcome. Unfortunate? Really? You sure? Aren't you just a little bit relieved? After all, we were gonna get our bracelets off while you were stuck with yours. How could you say that? I would never be so petty as... Before Kay could finish, the announcer's voice echoed through the facility. Ten minutes. All it. No. Time's running out. We should get back, guys. I'm staying here. I can't leave Quark. Are you nuts, old man? You're a solo. Luna and Fi could kill you. Yeah, I know. I've only got one BP. Exactly. If you don't vote, you'll default to ally. All they have to do is pick Betray. We won't. You staying here won't change our vote. Right. We always intended to choose ally. Ten Miyoji staying here is just another reason for us to stick to that plan. Luna has the same number of BP as you, Ten Miyoji. Normally, the safe plan would be to choose Betray. Since you will be unable to betray them, then Fi and Luna can choose to ally without worrying about their own points. Yes. Well, there you go. I trust Fi and Luna. I'm sure they'll choose ally. That's good. Okay, then, Ten Miyoji, you take care of Quark. You think I need you to tell me that? I won't take my eyes off him for a minute. Come on. We don't have much time left. We need to go. Back at the floor A warehouse, we open the AB rooms. Four minutes remain. Until Ambidex game polling closes. All right, Clover. We should probably head into. Uh, okay. All right. Let's ally. Let's see the shit shit that's gonna happen with Alice and Dio. Yeah. Can I? I changed my mind a little bit after talking to Ten Miyoji. I think we should choose ally. Hey, that's more just than just a little bit. That's like someone trading in a Shinsu for a German Shepherd. What the hell happened with you two? Did you see something to you? He... I can't tell you. What? Why? I just can't. You'd laugh if I did anyway. I won't laugh. Really? Promise. Well, I still can't tell you. Hey, come on. I promised. I told Ten Miyoji I wouldn't tell anybody. Alright, fine. I won't ask about it again. Demiage doesn't really have anything to do with this, right? Our opponent is Quark. No, he does matter. Quark is really important to Ten Miyoji. If we betray Quark, we're betraying Ten Miyoji. Come on, don't you remember? When we were going into the red, blue, and green doors, Ten Miyoji said something. I didn't say there wasn't anyone I trusted. There's one person, Clover. I just know that you'll keep him safe. I can't betray somebody who'd say that about me. You seem pretty ready to betray him back on 4B. That's because I didn't know who he was. Oh, -ho, so you're saying you know who that Miyoji really is? Well, if what he told me was true, yeah. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. Please. Choose ally. You're going to try and win yourself. If I try, you'll just throw me off, right? I don't think I'm strong enough to fight you. So... I mean, don't worry. I'm planning to choose ally anyway. Ten. Okay, what would I do? Ally or betray? I Three, chose... Two, ally. One.
We're always aligned before we betray. That's that's our motto. At some point we have to, but what did you choose, Sigma? You didn't see me push the button? No. Oh uh, well you'll in a moment. Let's go. I give her a light pat on the shoulder and headed toward the wall where the results would be displayed. Reason, yep. Points have please. So you chose ally, huh? Yeah. Quark is sick. I can't unable to vote. I couldn't bring myself to portray someone like that. Thank you. No, no need to thank me. I only did what anyone would have. So you guys just ally too, huh? Of course. Tenmyoji had only one BP left. And he was guaranteed to vote ally. So there's no way we could betray somebody in that position. If we had, then he'd... He'd... Yeah, you didn't have much choice. Alice Candy, on the other hand, seemed to have had less to listen around. Hey, what the hell is your problem? You're either crazy or just an asshole. Were you trying to kill me? Yes. No, nothing like that. Well then, what was it like if we'd voted ally? I... You would be dead. The needles in your bracelet would have activated, killing you. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I didn't think there was any way in hell you guys would choose Ally, not with Alice's BP at one. The only way you could possibly vote was Betray. Picking Ally when I knew you guys would pick Betray would have been suicide. You can't die. You've got six BP. Well, maybe not immediately, no. But I would have been signing my own death warrant. Heck, not just mine. Everyone except K's. What? Didn't you think it through? Your vote was always going to be Betray. Let's say I was a raving lunatic and picked Ally. What would happen to Kay's BP? Six plus three. See? Then it'd be life over. He'd open the number nine door and blow this popsicle stand. And that'd leave us twisting in the wind, living out the rest of our miserable lives stuck in this place. Jeez. You see? That's why I chose Betray. I did it to save all our necks, including yours. I was with teeth, her teeth and scowled fiercely at Dio, apparently trying to think of her rebuttal, who were finally snorting indignantly and stalking away. Shortly thereafter, the warehouse was filled with the rumbling sound of the door sliding shut. The Abidex gates have closed. Round three of the Abidex game will be the star round. Start the the. As many times as we want, huh? Then the we means. can play the AB game as many times as we want, right? Hey, didn't Zero Junior say something about this? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically. The parent solo assignments hop around a bit too. Yeah, he did. Can you guys all show me your bracelets? I want to see what all our colors and groups are this time. Put in moments, the series of wrists were extended for me to examine. I see. Glenn and Clover are cyan pair, and Phi and Alice are a magenta pair. The remaining three are solos. K is red, U is green, and I'm blue. How are the group supposed to work out for the next round? I think the next door is going to be the white ones down in the floor of the warehouse. Yeah, I heard about those. Alice told me about- I think I've got them fixed. Okay, it's same as before. Oh, is there- all Yes, no other- Admittedly, if they were- Oh god, I never thought I'd have to put up with Dio again. Oh yeah, that's- that's- just didn't that's unlucky. Enough, then. Sooner or later, everybody puts up with Dio. Wait. Hmm. Alright, what next? We get to the part where I can skip forward. So, um, what should we do now? It looks like we have a lot of time until the primary doors open. Yeah, about 80 minutes. I'm worried about Quark's condition. Those pods can't cure Radical Six. He still needs help. Well, we don't have anything to lose. 
so we might as well look for that medicine. Yeah. What about the rest of you? Oh, I'll help. As will I. Me too. Uh, fine. I guess I can help. What about you, Sigma? <laughs> of course I'll help. What kind of a jerk would you? Okay. We should split up and search. After some discussion, DNK were assigned to the pantry loon analysis treatment center and clarify myself to the pressure exchange chamber. Shall we regroup in the floor B warehouse ten minutes before the doors open? Well nodded. He turned to Alice and Luna. You are going to the treatment center, correct? Yes. Then please remember to tell Ten Miyoji where we intend to meet and when. Okay. You must also remember to bring Quark with you. I am concerned about removing him from the pod, but it can't be helped. Without Quark's bracelet, Sigma and Ten Miyoji will be unable to open the secondary door. Right. Good. Looks like we got all that straightened out. Let's go. We found not one another. We split up, each team heading in a different direction. So this is a pressure exchange chamber. No, this is the prep room. There are two levels. The actual pressure exchange chamber is downstairs. I've actually How been you know here that? before. Alice but... told me. She was one of the people who investigated this room. Did you talk to her when you were waiting for us back in the warehouse? Yeah. Well, let's head downstairs then. Good idea. You know, I'm wondering how this particular uh, scenario will play out. Because I don't think we'll go through the white door, because there's only one more escape room um, in the white doors that we haven't gone over, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in one of these. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just curious. Seems like it. Why do we have something like this here? Well, this is just what Alice told me, but... Apparently the pressure inside the facility was a lot higher than the pressure outside. That was part of the system designed to keep the virus from getting in. It didn't mean, however, that we need to go through a decompression process in order to get outside. Remember all those suits along the wall of the prep room? Those keep you from getting infected. We won't even be able to enter the pressure exchange chamber if we don't have them on. I see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Then that newspaper article was right? Unfortunately, that seems pretty likely. So the air out there is teeming with Radical Six. Yeah. Something's been bothering me. What is it? Aren't you saying that if we put on those suits, we can go into the pressure exchange chamber and go outside? Right? Oh. No, we can't do that. The door beyond the pressure exchange chamber is locked up tight. In fact, it's welded shut. Damn it. Just one door between us and freedom. Well, if you look at it that way, it's the same as the number nine door. Okay, yeah, but... Whatever. We need to be focusing on finding that Accelivere. Quark needs it. Yeah, you're right. I'll go look around upstairs. You two take this floor, all right? Got it. Okay. Looked everywhere we could think of, but turned up nothing. Eventually I couldn't keep my mouth shut any longer. Hey, what do you think the deal is with this stuff about the world being infested with some crazy virus? The pandemic seems like it would make the news, but I don't remember hearing anything. Wait a minute, you mentioned it, didn't you? Back when Dio was asking questions. We were in the infirmary. It was right after Quark lost it. Have any of you guys heard anything about any sort of viral pandemic? Well, no, but... And then Al said... I have heard rumors about a virus being used as a bioweapon. So what... what's the rumor she was talking about? I got a feeling you and Alice were talking about the same thing. Over. What do you know? What are you and Alice anyway? I heard you guys belong to some sort of organization, but what is it? Clara was quiet for a long time. She bit her thumbnail and looked down at the floor. Then finally she lifted her head and met my eyes. Fine. I think I can trust you. Just don't tell Alice, okay? Ooh, just gotta be the Clover and then... Alright. Promise? Promise. 
Clara nodded and began to talk. I listened with rapt attention and complete lust for words. Here is what she said. Alice and I are agents of the SOIS, which is under the jurisdiction of the Department of Defense. SOIS stands for Special Ops of Internal Security, and we're an elite division intelligence that investigates potentially disruptive or dangerous elements, such as domestic or foreign terrorists, radical political splinter groups, and religious organizations with extreme agendas that could pose a threat to the state or citizenry. Our existence hasn't been made public, so there are only a few people who even know we exist. You're probably wondering how I even got involved in something like that, huh? Well, it's here when I met Alice. I told you that I played an honorary game twice before, right? Well, that, this was after the second time, so about a year ago. We just escaped and we were all stuffed into this SUV barreling across the desert. I was driving, and that's when I saw her. Alice. She was standing next to the road with her thumb out. She was already working for the SOIS, and she had been on her way to the building we'd been trapped in as part of her investigation. But on the way there, her car had broken down. We offered to give her a ride, of course. After she got in, we started talking, and it turned out that Alice had gotten a tip that the terrorists she was after were in the building we'd been trapped in. We couldn't see how us playing the memory game had anything to do with the terrorist. But Alice had a suggestion. Maybe the two people who trapped you in there are the terrorists. That didn't seem very likely to us, but we were chasing after them anyway, so we decided to bring Alice with us. Unfortunately, we didn't find them. As far as we know, they're still out there now, on the run. Anyway, we were taken back to SOS headquarters and put into custody. I guess they thought there had to be some kind of connection between us being kidnapped and the terrorist group they were investigating. But they must not have found anything because after a few days of questioning, they let us go. Well, went home and returned to our lives. But things didn't go back the way they'd been. My mom got real worried about being my brother since we've gotten kidnapped twice now, so she hired bodyguards for us. Oh, I haven't told you about my brother, have I? He's super awesome for one. And he was in both of the last two notary games too. So anyway, we've been grabbed twice. But the people behind the two memory games were totally different. It didn't matter to my mom though, so after all so after that, all these huge men in black suits followed me and my brother everywhere. It was awful. We were always being watched. People would look at us funny because we were being followed around by a bunch of creepy looking guys. I couldn't stand it. Just when I thought I'd finally be free, all that I was waiting for was another kind of prison. The only time I was really happy was when I was ha hanging out with my brother. So we were talking it over one day and we decided to leave. Like, run away. So we did it! After that, we lived on our own. I worked in a cafe and he composed music. He plays the harp and he started writing this kind of new age music. It got kind of popular so we didn't have to worry too much about surviving. Sometimes he'd play a little, a little venues like coffee houses and stuff, and his fans would show up and listen to him play and cry. Or some of them would meet on their own and recite stuff from the book he'd written and play his songs. I know that sounds kind of, like, weird and culty, but they just do that stuff on their own, okay? My brother doesn't have anything to do with it. Anyway, we did that for a while, and then one day Alice showed up. I need your help, she told us. We need people who can do what you can do. So we went to the location she gave us, and it turned out to be the headquarters of the SOAS, where they'd, been taken a, where they'd taken us after the second number of game. They put us in a room with about a dozen or so people who were all about the same age as us. A bunch of them looked familiar too. It only took a moment to realize how we knew each other. They were the kids from the first number of game. We were all excited to see each other again, and we were hugging and shaking hands and stuff. And then Alice walked in. The whole room went quiet. She walked up to the podium and looked around the room, making eye contact with each one of us. Right now, a terrorist organization is preparing for a major attack. They plan to trigger a viral pandemic. If they succeed, they will strike a massive blow against all humanity, not just any one country. It's possible that we, as a species, will die out completely. We are doing our best to prevent this, but we need your help. You are what we call experts. You have the ability to access the morphogenetic field. We need that. I'm guessing you don't know what any of that is, but basically we can do this thing that's kind of like telepathy. I mean, it isn't really telepathy, but it's probably the closest thing, okay? As first can resonate your consciousness with another person through this thing called the morphogenetic field. The purpose of the first notary game was to research that ability. 
So they kidnapped kids with the potential to do it and threw them in the game. Alice had gathered up all the kids from that experiment. Well, I mean, it had been nine years since it happened, so we weren't really kids anymore. Anyway, everybody she brought in was an Esper. That included me and my brother, of course. I bet you think I'm just making all this up, huh? I don't blame you. But it's pretty crazy. I mean, I wasn't even starting to forget I could do that stuff. So when I heard Alice's story, I was like, screw that. I was trying to move on with my life and now some shitty government creeps wanted me to use some weird ability I had for them? No way. I wasn't even sure I could do it anymore. Some of the others felt different, though, and they told Alice they'd do it. It was a job after all, and most people wouldn't turn down a salary like that. All oh, right, I forgot to tell you, she told us how much they'd pay us if we helped. It was a lot. A lot. More wealth than you can imagine. But I was still totally against doing it. My brother told me he'd go along with whatever I decided, so I decided we were leaving. A couple days passed, and then Alice showed up at her apartment. She didn't waste time. The people behind the first nunnery game might have been part of the terrorist organization Alice and the SOIS were after. Wasn't that she asked something that I might want to know more about? They got me curious. My brother, too. But the clincher was what Seven said to us. He was one of the guys that got abducted with us for the second nunnery game. She called him on, her, on his phone right then and there, and he handed it to us. You guys are the only people who can do this. We don't know where Junpei is. He's gone off to travel the world looking for a conic. I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Please, just do me a favor and help Alice out. Junpei, like seven other participants from the second Nunnery game. I kind of one of the people behind the first Nunnery game. Seven was a Japanese policeman, which is probably how Alice got in touch with him. Anyway, they did it. My brother and I agreed to join the SOIS. For the next couple months, all we did was train. Half of the time was general knowledge and technical skills and SOIS each we needed, the other half was learning to strengthen our Esper abilities. I'd actually known about Espers for quite a while and I had a lot of techniques that helped us get better and stronger. After several months of hard work, we were finally ready for our first field mission. Mine was an infiltration. My brother stayed at the base so I could relay information back through him. I was supposed to sneak into a research facility, posing as one of their workers, and then use the morphogenetic field to transmit what I found back to my brother. Everything went wrong. It was a trap. The whole research facility was fake and I got captured. Alice had come and had to come and rescue me. I'd been sending information about the incident of the facility to my brother, and Alice used that information to come and find me. As soon as she got there, she picked me up and carried me out. I was relieved and happy to be alive with three, but also felt ashamed and miserable. While she was carrying me back out, I started to cry. She was just so cool, and I wasn't. I wanted to be just like her. So from that day onward, I did everything I could to be more like Alice. Our infiltration ended in failure, but we did manage to get something useful. In fact, we were able to figure out where their headquarters was. The directors decided that December 25th, 2028 would be the day we would strike. This time, I promised myself we wouldn't screw it up. I was finally going to get some answers about something that had been with me for most of my life. But then on December 22nd, three days before the raid, Alice and I were attacked by people in gas masks while we were going over our plans. Oh, thank God. This was a pretty long read. When you woke up, you were in the warehouse. Yeah. All that time, you seemed to have tired Clover out. She sighed in her long hair sweet as she moved. Hey, uh, I got a few questions. What are they? Well, first off, your uh, powers, I guess. I'm guessing you can't use them right now? Yeah, I'm not really sure why. I've been sending my brother messages ever since I woke up, but... No response? Yeah. If there was another Esper here, they could make me stronger. But that's just wishful thinking. Wait. What? Well, if there's someone else who's stronger than me, then they kind of absorb my powers. Maybe... No, never mind. That's probably not it. Right. Whatever. I have some other questions, so... Moving on. I think I understand what Alice was talking about now. 
Hey, we're trying to spread the virus, right? Yeah. Okay. So who are they? Well, I can't tell you that. What? Why not? You told me all that other stuff, but this is too much? Well, Alice would be mad at me. I already told you I wouldn't tell her. But... Fine. Let me rephrase. When are they going to do it? Well, if we knew that, we wouldn't have gone to all that trouble. So you don't know? No. All we know is soon. But that could mean just about anything. Yeah. It could be next week or next month or even next year. Or it could have happened already. Wait. You mean they might have already released the virus? Wouldn't that make the most sense? Like, how about this room? Uh, just give me a second. Or that newspaper article. And the three people who were put in cold sleep. Are you saying you, me, and Alice were frozen and the pandemic happened when we were on ice? Wait, no, it doesn't make sense. Nobody else has heard of Radical Six either. Maybe they're lying. Really? All six of them? Well, if Kay really does have memory loss, then it's only five. Quark is out too. So you're saying Tamiyoji, Diofi, and Luna are all lying? Hmm. Guess they are a little suspicious. Right? What's their motive? For lying? How would I know? And what's the motive for a terrorist organization to start a pandemic? I heard it was something about purifying the unclean? Purifying the unclean? Oh. Oh. Unclean. 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 What? What? What are you doing? Shut up! Just hold on a minute. I'm this close to remembering. I'm clean, 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 clean. He left up suddenly excited. Neo stick mean. Neo what? Did you forget it already? I'm talking about this stuff. As she spoke, she pulled something out of her pocket. It was the injection gun complete with a vial of medication. Oh, right, I remember that. It wasn't safe in the treatment center, right? Yeah! I didn't have any idea what it was, though, so I gave it to you. Exactly! Are you saying you've heard about this neostic mean stuff before? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just remembered. You remembered? My brother told me about that. Neostic mean is a type of colon esterase inhibitor. That means it's a sort of... Antidote for tubocurine. I'm um, sorry, but I still don't get it. How easy do I have to make it? Ugh. Okay, fine. I'll start at the top, all right? The stuff I've got in here is neostigmine, which counteracts the muscle relaxant tubocurine. Following me? Recurrent is a poison in our bracelets, right? Right. It's the second thing we get injected with if we're penalized. First, is this over real? I... So you're saying Neustig Mean keeps it from working? Yes! Oh my god! How many times are you going to make me say it? So we can just inject ourselves with this if we get penalized? Yeah! We don't have to die. We're going to be okay. We can only pull the trigger once, though. That means we can only use it on one person. Yeah. Well, it's still good news. This means that one of us can break the rules once. Like, let's see... The best way to use it would be for sneaking through the number 9 door. If somebody gets 9 points, they can open it, right? With this stuff, somebody who doesn't have 9 points could still leave with them. Anyway, I'm gonna go tell Alice. What? Hey! Clever, wait! Clever! It was too late. Clever was already on the lift and gone.
damn. I was, I think, understandably upset. With no stairs, my only chance was to wait for the lift to come back down. As soon as it was back, I jumped on and headed back upstairs. Don't worry, something bad's gonna happen. Oh boy. Fi, where did Clever go? Fi, can you hear me? She didn't say anything, just hearing me with her mouth half open. Her eyes seemed slightly glazed and her body wasn't naturally stiff. Uh, Fi? I grabbed her shoulder and shook her gently. Slowly she raised her arm, fingers drooping limply from it. She gestured toward the exit that led away from the warehouse. That way? She went out that door? Fi's only answer was a slow shout and knock. Right, got it. Thanks. I guess. I had for the exit then paused. You look pretty tired. Get some rest, alright? Still no response. There was something odd about her, but catching Clover seemed like more of a priority. I turned back around and jogged out of the door towards the treatment center. I was clearly suffering from Radical Six there, so I have a bad feeling about all this. Uh huh. This is weird. Where is everybody? I assume Alice would be in the treatment center, so Clover would have gone there to find her, but. The room was empty. Luna and Tamioji were gone too. It left Quark and the readout on the spot said his vital signs were still normal. As far as I could tell, he was still asleep. Fine. Guess it's time to go look somewhere else. I'm mean, in a movie out of the treatment center. Nobody in the pantry. in the warehouse or the lounge where did everybody go can't find anybody. Every single room is empty. Wait, there's still one place I haven't checked. The infirmary. So I have a bad feeling about this. Oh boy. I ran into the room and stopped short. I might as well have run into a brick wall. My chest tightened so much I could barely breathe. No, what? What happened? I felt my whole body convulsed, but from terror or nausea I couldn't tell. My legs went limp and crumbled to the floor. Something sticky pressed against the palm of my hand and I looked down to see blood. A vast warm pool of fresh blood stretching out across the room, lapping at my legs and hands. Why? This can't be real. How could... Jesus. In the middle of the lake of blood, like an island of flesh with bodies. There were a blood, bloody tangle of lifeless limbs and dead eyes, with too much blood and chaos for me to tell who was who. Had they sliced themselves open or stabbed one another? I couldn't tell. All the blood. Too much blood. Whatever they'd done, it was clear what tool they used to do it. A scalpel lay in the blood next to them, its handle and blade streaked with gore. This was how they had died, this tiny blade. Oh god, this is it. It's all over. This is how it ends. That's right. 
I have to end it. This nightmare will finally be over. Time to wake up. My fingers scraped across the floor as I picked up the scalpel. I lifted it slowly, carefully to my neck as if someone were gutting my hand with theirs and drew it across my throat. All right, uh, ending number two, a very depressing one. But ending number two nonetheless. And having learned about Neostigmine, we can go back here. And I think that's probably what I'll do. Yeah. And then I might take this path and betray Luna once. I'm I'm sorry, Luna, I don't want to do it, but Alright. So we are jumping back. And it's just um, so in this timeline, we um, allied with Luna, went through the uh, rec room. Um, this is when I believe Kay uh, took a nap and Dio died and all that stuff. Uh, and then the um, bracelet and the Dio broke and we're like, okay, how can we save them? Flash, flash, flash. The first is an anesthetic called Soporil Beta. The other is a muscle relaxant called Tubo Curarine. Your bracelet also has a bunch of needles on the inside. If you break the rules, those needles hop out and inject you. My brother told me about that. Neostigmine is a type of cholinesterase inhibitor. That means it's sort of an antidote for tubocurine. I knew it! Look at that! I found it, so it's mine. Of course. The antidote. The antidote? I didn't have time to explain. I took off running toward the exit. Sigma, where are you going? Stay here. I'll be right back. I bolt out of the warehouse to where the treatment room. Thing you put in his pocket. Come on, come on, come on. Do you still have it? Sweat was pouring down my face, but I didn't bother to wipe it off. There wasn't time. I dug frantically through Dio's coat until. Aha! Found it! Oh. There's only one dose. The injection gun uses the whole bottle at once. Shit. I can't save both of them. Well, you know, how are you gonna inject the K anyway? Remains until chromatic doors. Closed. What, one minute? Shit! Spun around and shot out of the treatment center. Three. Chromatic doors closing. Boy. No, you gotta be kidding me! Oh dear. Sigma. There was a sharp, quick pain in my wrist, barely even noticeable. I couldn't feel anything flowing into my veins, but I knew it was there. First would be the anesthetic soparil. I blinked and my vision started to blur. When I tried to think, it felt like my mind had been stuffed with cotton. My legs began to wobble, but gave out entirely as I crumpled to the floor. No, I couldn't fall asleep. I had to give one of them the antidote before my first would inject me with tubocurine. 
With every ounce of strength I could muster, I forced my eyes back open. Hand finally limp on the floor in front of me. My right hand I could feel the injector gun with its precious cargo. I could only pull the trigger once. Who was I going to choose? Phi or K? No, what was I thinking? There was only one answer. Phi, I didn't even have a choice. After all, Keith's entire body was covered in impenetrable metal. I'm sorry, Kay. I summoned up as much energy as I could and dragged myself toward Phi. After what felt like an eternity, I was finally within arm's reach. With no time to waste, I pressed the gun to her arm and pulled the trigger. Sigma, what the hell did you... I injected you with Neostigmine. It's a type of cholinesterase inhibitor. It's the antidote to the muscle relaxant. Why did you pick me? Because I can't use the injection gun on K. I'd never get through the metal. Then why didn't you inject yourself? Hey, guess you've got a point. Honestly, didn't even cross my mind. You're the biggest idiot on the planet. Hey, come on. Is that any kind of thing to say to somebody who's about to die? How about something more tender? No, screw this. I don't want to live if it means being in debt to you. No goddamn way. I'm not gonna... Her words slurred and slowed and her eyes fluttered closed. She wasn't dead, of course. I could hear the faint sound of her breathing and see her chest rise and fall. Good. If I was gonna be alright. But, Kay... I looked over in his direction. That was when I noticed it. Open? There's a hole here on the back of your head. Yeah, it looks like you inserted something. This is open, so maybe you put some kind of key in there. You could open up the suit and take the mask off. Wait. Then he... But when could he have... It's empty. Yes. Was there something in there before? No. It was empty when I found it. But what if he'd lied? Could Kay have taken the key? I'd gotten it didn't really matter anymore. What didn't matter was that Kay had been able to remove his armor. And he had... Holy shit. Then that would mean... The yes, killer is... I cooked as much strength as I could from my increasing lethargic body. And crawl toward Kay. Kay! Wake up! Come on, talk to me. I grabbed his shoulder and shook him until it finally shifted and spoke. Sigma. I just need to know one thing. Did you kill Dia? You weren't sleeping, were you? After I left, you took off your armor. You didn't want to go the same way I had, so you took the other door. After that, after you went the long way around through the warehouse and the crew quarters, you headed for the elevator. Bumped into five, we went back to the lounge to check on you. We saw you, or we saw your armor, I guess. By then, you would have been out of it. While you were in the lounge, you went to the treatment room and killed Teal. You must have turned off the oxygen to a spot, although you probably didn't stick around to make sure he died. I'm betting you were in a hurry to get back before Fire and I noticed something was up. Once you got back to floor A, you needed us out of the lounge, so you made a noise in the hall to lure us out. Then you ran around and took the long way back to the lounge so you could enter through the rear door.
Once you were there, you put your suit on again and waited for us. As soon as we found Dia's body, we did exactly what you'd expected. Okay, wake up. Something's happened. We're going to wake up very disoriented and confused. Come on, Kay. I'm almost out of time. Did you kill Dio? Mm. Yes. Your reasoning is correct. I... I killed him. Why? Because I couldn't forgive him. He took the life of someone very important to me. I couldn't... Who did he kill? The... The old woman. What? She was like... Mother to me. She showed me how to see... How to see meaning in my life. Wait, are you saying... Yes, I am. She was the woman who came here when I was 18. Whoa, hold on. What did you mean here? Sigma, unfortunately we are out of time. There's something I have to tell you. I made a promise that you would hear it. Do you understand? This is... Very important. You must pay attention. You cannot forget. Forget? It wasn't making sense. I was about to die. How on earth would I be remembering anything for more than a few seconds? If you see a lion with two heads devouring the sun, remember, remember these letters. Okay, we're getting somewhere. M I L K Mil Kevoli. O-L-I This will open the second gate. This is probably the password. What the hell? Hey, Kay, who told you to tell me this? No, who are you? Show me. Show me who you really are. I grabbed a hold of Key's mask and tore it off. What? No, that's... that's impossible. That face. It's... it's my face. I felt a sharp pain in my left wrist and my body collapsed unceremoniously. The second drug, tubocurine. My vision began to blur and my head felt unnaturally heavy. The world faded away and my consciousness slipped down into the cold, dark waters of nothingness. All right. That's one more ending. The K end. So we're, we're slowly making some progress. So what we're going to do before we quit it, because otherwise it's going to start us back at the very beginning, let's jump back here and... And I hate... Don't have time to talk. I hate having to do this. I'm so sorry, Luna. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh god, I feel terrible. Alright, let's make a save here and we'll pick it up from here next time. Thank you for watching. Check me out at Twitch, like to be slash games with Nick. Uh, follow, hit the bell, see my schedule, or youtube.com slash games with Nick. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. I appreciate you taking the time to engage with my content. Excited to keep playing through the game, finish it sometime soon. Um, yeah, and um, next time we'll pay the price for betraying Luna and go through the pantry. So excited about that. So I hope you stick around and I will see you next time.